TJ, and this is my channel, Water and Glass. Today we'll be going over basic water parameters for keeping freshwater neocardaria shrimp. It includes your um, red cherry shrimp, your blue velvet shrimp, any basic colored shrimps that aren't the crystal shrimp, they require slightly different water parameters. We'll be using some API test kits to check these water parameters, although you're free to use any test kit you like. The information provided on exactly what value should be should be universal amongst all test kits. We'll also be talking a little bit about tank cycling to make sure that you have your tank set up exactly how it needs to be to process any of the waste that the shrimps have and maintain the proper tank health. So let's jump into it. In this test that I'm showing here, we're looking at pH. pH is measuring the acidity or alkalinity of your aquarium. In a shrimp aquarium, pH is not super important. It's much more important to look at hardness of the water instead of the pH. However, we do have it in the API test kit, so we will measure it. In here we're looking for a pH of between 6 and 8. There's a, quite a lot of uh, variability here that we're okay with. So, as long as we like start with a decent base of water, there's nothing in the aquarium that's modifying our pH too heavily, we're going to be in good shape for uh, pH. Understanding the nitrogen cycle is an important part of aquarium keeping. The nitrogen cycle is the process by which ammonia, the waste produced by fish and shrimp, is converted through nitrite to nitrate by beneficial bacteria. These beneficial bacteria are very important to the aquarium in converting those toxic chemicals of ammonia and nitrite into the much safer nitrate. That nitrate is excellent plant food for um, the plants in our aquarium as well. If you don't have plants, you must remove that nitrate by periodic water changes. Typically in an aquarium, we want to see nitrate levels less than 30 parts per million. On this test kit, it's kind of hard to see uh, exactly the line between 20, 30, and 40 parts per million. But generally, as we start to get a darker orange, that's bad, and certainly red is bad, so we want to stay out of um, that range. So having like a nice light orange says that there's enough nitrate in the aquarium for your plants, but it's not going to be toxic for your shrimp that you have in the aquarium. When establishing a new aquarium, water cycling is very important. It's what starts the nitrogen cycle. So. When you start an aquarium fresh from the store and you unpack everything, take everything out of the boxes, there's no bacteria in the filters and the bacteria colony must be established. Now this happens naturally, but it doesn't happen if there's no food for the bacteria. And the food for that bacteria is the ammonia that is typically produced by um, fish and shrimp waste. However, if you don't have any sh uh, shrimp in there, there's no fish or shrimp waste for the bacteria to start on. I've seen several YouTube videos where someone just starts the aquarium with nothing in it and after three weeks they say the tank has cycled, but nothing has actually happened because there's no initial amount of ammonia to start that cycling process. After you add your source of ammonia, once it breaks down, you can detect that ammonia with the test kit that you're using. After some time, that you'll see the ammonia go down and nitrite will show up on your test after the bacteria that converts ammonia to nitrite is established. Then after a time the nitrites will go down and then you'll see a spike up of nitrate. However, you shouldn't let both ammonia or nitrite go down to zero in the early establishment of your aquarium. You want to keep that bacteria alive and healthy so you can have that population in there. If there's no food to maintain them, the colony will die off. So you want to slowly ramp up your concentrations of um, bacteria and your ability to process those wastes. If you're ready to put uh, your stock in there right at that time, like um, fish or shrimp, you may do so. Or you can um, just add more um, fish food or bloodworms to keep that food going so your bacteria colony does not die off. For shrimp, it's a good idea to um, do this type of cycling and build up the bacteria naturally because shrimp eat biofilm which is located all around the aquarium. That slime that you feel 
when you touch things inside the aquarium is a bacterial biofilm that the shrimp love to eat. If you don't have that biofilm established, you must provide supplemental food for um, shrimp when you start the aquarium. So typically, I would prefer to do a um, tank cycle first and then add the shrimp so that they have a natural source of uh, food to eat and graze on throughout the aquarium. You can speed up a cycling process if you need to by taking filter media from an established tank and introducing it into your new setup. However, this has some downsides. If you have an existing infestation of, say, um, blackbeard algae or some um, disease in that aquarium, you might not want to move existing filter media from the pre-existing aquarium into your fresh brand new aquarium. So it's up to you to weigh those pros and cons. The most important parameter to check is GH or the general hardness of the aquarium water. GH is the measure of uh, minerals in the water that which make the water hard, hence the term hardness. Um, when we talk about this test and specifically the API GH test, we're looking for degrees of general hardness. A lot of people look at um, hardness in terms of parts per million and they'll describe the water having an ideal hardness of around 200 parts per million. But for this um, style of test, looking between 6 and 10 or even 5 and 10 um, GH is good hardness to have. It's important to have good hardness in a shrimp aquarium because shrimps regularly shed their exoskeletons and the parameters of the water determine how well that exoskeleton regrows. If you have too little or too much hardness, your shrimp survival rate will also suffer. In Calgary where I live, the tap water has a uh, degrees general hardness of 14, which is much too hard for the shrimp to effectively survive in. Sometimes that hardness can go up to like even 16 or 18, and that causes very low um, uh, survivability in your shrimps. So there's a couple of different ways you can approach reducing the general hardness in your aquarium. One way is to use reverse osmosis water and remineralize it with some sort of um, shrimp remineralizing product. Or you can um, take your tap water and dilute it some with reverse osmosis water to get the general uh, hardness that you require for your aquarium. Once you dial in general hardness, you'll have much better success with survivability and reproduction of your shrimp to maintain a healthy colony. Thanks for watching. I've put some of the water parameters you're aiming for up on the screen. Upcoming videos that I have planned include some reviews of some aquarium lights, um, including this one and one that I have purchased. I will also be reviewing the tank itself and some light and a filter that it comes with. This um, Penplex Radius curved glass tank is quite neat looking. And I'll also be examining in detail why I use sand over aqua soil or dirt. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.